Live with Lisa, where we explore business insights and philanthropy with an emphasis on the Asian American community. I'm your host, Lisa Song Sutton. In this episode, I sit down with Sunny Ahuja, entrepreneur, restaurateur, and co-owner of Bin702. Check out behind the scenes and get more tips about business and community by following us on social media at Live with Lisa TV. My guest and dear friend Sunny shares his advice and startup tips for how he got involved in the food and beverage industry. Check it out. So explain the business model of Bin702. So the business model for Bin702, we're, uh, we're a wine bar, uh, craft beer, uh, specialty cocktail, uh, cheese charcuterie, uh, and grilled cheese sandwich concept all housed within a uh, shipping container. It's actually two shipping containers welded together, so we're in a very tiny footprint. And with it being such a small, confined space, what are the challenges you face compared to having a, a regular large restaurant space? Uh, well, storage is one thing. We definitely have, uh, you know, everything's got to have, uh, have a purpose that, that in, the, in the place. So uh, one of the things we do to uh, combat storage is all, all our wines by the glass is on tap. So, uh, so instead of having individual bottles, we have wine sitting in kegs. So that helps us with, with storage. Uh, we have storage underneath our seats. <laughs> so uh, every, you know, we have uh, hanging cabinets. So everything, it's like owning a boat. So everything in the boat has, you know, is dual purpose. So everything in our small space has to be very functional. If something doesn't have a function, it's gotta go out. What are the challenges that you face in having a business, a restaurant business, in downtown Las Vegas as opposed to other parts of the city? Uh, you know, downtown's an interesting animal. It, it's one, one thing that's a challenge is that we're more of a destination space. So uh, we're a place that people, there's not a lot of residential down here. So uh, it's always a challenge because people have to come down here. And then we hear about parking all the time. You know, the Summerlin, Green Valley, Las Vegas as a whole, they're very, you know, we're, we're pretty spoiled here with free parking and uh, with a lot of parking lots and, and, and garage parking. And downtown, it's paid for parking. So uh, it, it's hard to get people to overcome that sometimes. Uh, I mean, we're doing pretty well, but, uh, but it's, we have to educate our customers on our guests on where to, where to park, how to park. Uh, you know, I'm always stopping along the way when I'm walking down the street and helping people with the parking meters because uh, it's, you know, we, we got to make it easy for them. Sure. So you've had this space here with Bin 702 for several years. What is your favorite thing about having a space here at Container Park? Uh, you know, the people are great. Uh, it, it's nice. You know, we're such part of a community. You know, that's, that's a great thing about downtown is, you know, we, we're all friends and neighbors down here, all, all, especially all the business operators. But it's great. I mean, look around, there's kids playing. You know, the, it's a beautiful day. I'm doing this interview wearing sunglasses. Uh, uh, we have entertainment. Uh, you know, it's just, it's one of the better patios, I think, also. Uh, you get a lot of patios in, uh, in this market are facing a parking lot. And we face inward and we have, you know, fake grass, but a screen. <laughs> uh, we have a playground behind us. So, you know, it's, it's nice being within the container park. What would your advice be to someone who's considering maybe taking a restaurant concept into downtown? Uh, do your homework. Uh, find a good location, find uh, the rent circuit can be challenging, so uh, find a good lease rate. So you have partners in this endeavor with you, with Ben. Yep. How did you select your partners? Uh, <laughs> on cocktail napkins and, <laughs> and, 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 and bars. <laughs> very informally. <laughs> yeah, very informally. Yeah, my business partner is a very close friend of mine, uh, but also Downtown Projects uh, in, is an investor in, in Ben 702. So, uh, you know, we have a very good relationship with with uh, Downtown Project, and they've been very supportive. So, uh, uh, and then Don Welch is my business partner, and he's also a very close personal friend. And why did you decide to take in an investor for this business? Uh, well, you know, it's always good when, when, you're, when you're starting a, a business, it's always nice to do it with other people's money. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think that's not with anything. Uh, and, and plus the, uh, I mean, all kidding aside, the, uh, the investment program with Downtown Project was uh, was very giving, and it, it was a, it was a good deal. So uh, and it made a lot of sense. And you know we actually in just just over two years we paid that investment off. And so you know it, it's good. And now everybody you know we're, we're now we're all sharing in revenue uh, as of last this month actually. So this is our first month of uh, revenue sharing. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. And what is one thing that all young entrepreneurs should be doing right now? 
one of the things I did early on was I followed my passion. My passion's always been food and beverage. So you have to follow your passion, but you, at the end of the day, these are all widgets, right? Like this, and so you have to understand the economics of your passion. So too many, I see too many times that people follow their dream and follow their passion, and they're so one-sided in that dream that they don't understand that you have to buy, all these things cost money, and then you have to understand the economics of your electric bill and your rent and your labor and all that, and what, what does that mean for what you have to sell your widget for? So uh, I think it's really important that people understand the business side as much as the passion side of any business. And so what do we have here? Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, actually what we have is uh, we have a whole charcuterie plate. We've got uh, different sorts of meats, uh, specialty cheeses, uh, uh, a great baguette from Bon Bread, uh, uh, Spanish olives, uh, actual real honeycomb, wow. which uh, is amazing and a whole grain mustard, and some nuts, and some source, dry fruits. Where do you source your ingredients uh, from? Uh, we use specialty vendors. So we have uh, wholesalers in town that source from all over the world. And so one thing that's great about being in Vegas is that we have all these great food vendors that for all these amazing restaurants on the Strip, so a small place like ours can benefit from that because they, you know, we, once you can do your homework, you can find some great, great product here in town. And what's the ultimate vision for BIN 702 for the future? I think we're ready to expand. So if anybody's got a place, a home for us, uh, I'm all ears. Uh, they can get my email address from you, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, no, we, I think we're ready to grow. Uh, you know, we, uh, we've got a really great business model. Uh, one thing that, you know, we're really, we're really proud of what we put out, but we're also excited about the business as a business. Thank you, Sonny, for your great insights and business tips. Stay tuned for our next segment. When was the last time you truly competed? When was the last time you fought valiantly for what was rightfully yours? When was the last time you rewrote history? In the United States and around the world, we are Ultra Brand and we build the world's most innovative and aggressive brands. Welcome to Synergy Sotheby's International Realty. Our purpose is to artfully unite extraordinary properties with extraordinary lives. We are committed to helping our clients purchase or sell with unparalleled service from start to finish. With nearly 700 offices worldwide, including two in Las Vegas and Henderson, we provide access to luxury homes, investment properties, and more. Synergy Sotheby's International Realty. at mohicamedia.com. Luxury swimwear for the resort lifestyle. Visit us at liquidandlace.com. Welcome to brandbridge.org. We connect quality brands with passionate influencers. Brands who want to grow need to be talked about. And it isn't enough to just have a company social media account. Brandbridge is a community with a vast network of influencers that can help your brand connect with millions of new customers in a meaningful way. You need trusted curated influencers on your side that you can grow a true partnership with over time. We deliver substantial increases in engagement and awareness, along with rich analytics to track your social growth. Visit our website at brandbridge.org and download our app today. Welcome to Sin City Cupcakes, Las Vegas' number one alcohol-infused cupcake company. With over 40 decadent flavors, all of our product is baked fresh and made to order. We offer free delivery by the dozen across the Las Vegas Valley. We specialize in making your event or occasion fabulous. Call us at 702-776-0955 
or place your order online today at SimCityCupcakes.com. To learn more business tips and see behind the scenes photos, find our social media at Live with Lisa TV. And stay tuned for what we have coming up next. The Asian Community Development Council held its inaugural launch event at Pearl inside the MGM Grand. The mission of the council is to improve the general well-being and education of the Asian, Pacific Islander, and other ethnic communities in Nevada. The event gathered politicians, judges, and other leaders who enjoyed live entertainment, food, a community raffle, and special appearance by the Miss Asian Las Vegas reigning royalty. Well, tonight was my launch party, and I cannot tell you how I keep pinching myself and say, this can't be happening. I can't believe the love in this community that's here tonight, that support and believe what we're trying to do. And I'm just lucky to be able to do it and have people support me so I can finally build this idea of a community center, which I've been talking about since I've been here 21 years in the meet. It's a vibrant um, mix of so many different cultures. Um, and, you know, I myself am actually half Japanese, and so, you know, I want to support and represent um, the, the different cultures in our community and make sure that people are aware and of our, our similarities, but also celebrate our differences as well. So I think the, the, the ACDC is just such a great example of that, of bringing people together and celebrating our different cultures. So that's the reason why I support um, the Asian Community Development Council. The uh, reason why I'm involved with uh, ACDEC is, uh, A, I'm a very huge advocate in the Asian American Pacific Islander community in the state of Nevada. Uh, I served as the state commissioner of Nevada for Minority Affairs. Uh, but one thing is just identifying the things that VITAs contribute to our community. Uh, looking at ne the state of Nevada, we have 239,000 Asian American Pacific Islanders. We have the fastest growing in the entire country in the past 10 years. And one of the th key things we've identified is the need to register Asian American Pacific Islanders for voting. Um, Vita has done an excellent job. She has partnered with uh, another key national organization called APIA Vote. And they've already registered over 1,100 voters. Uh, they partnered with our colleges like CSN. Uh, UNLV, they've partnered with the casinos, been on the station casino properties in Caesars. She's also involved with planning a nonpartisan uh, presidential town hall, which is going to be in August 12th. So it's, it's a huge thing. We need this in our community, being an advocate, knowing that we have to ha express a lot more unity across the pan-Asian American and Pacific Islander community. And I think this is a good start with her focus and efforts. Hey, what's going on? My name is Ash Kumara. I'm the co-founder of Tradecraft Media. Tradecraft Media is a knowledge video network that helps you master your passion, trade, or craft. We provide how-to videos, inspiring videos, mentorship videos, and even courses so that you can achieve that entrepreneurial dream that you've always wanted to do. So check out this week's video. I hope you like it, and thank you again. So one of the keys to becoming successful is mastering the art of small talk. Aurel Moody here, founder of Art of Likeability, and I want to give you a very easy strategy on how you can master small talk in any situation that you're in, whether it's professional or personal. Now a lot of people don't like small talk. They're like, oh man, I don't like small talk, I don't like fake conversations, I like deep, real conversations. Yeah, but you know, you can't just meet someone and talk about some amazingly deep, complex ideas. You just can't walk up to someone and be like, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Let me tell you about the depression that I feel consistently that's bor burrowing a hole into my heart. You can't, it's too much. You gotta, you gotta build up to it. You gotta kinda, you know, stretch, warm up before you go into those incredibly deep things. But a lot of times we don't know how to actually simply small talk with someone. So here's a really great way that you can small talk with anyone. It's the same question you can use in any situation. Whenever I meet someone, what I do not do in any circumstance is immediately say, so tell me what you do. It's a question that I think is almost distasteful because a lot of people either A, don't like talking about what they do, or they talk about what they do all the time, they just want to talk about something else, or whatever it is. Maybe they are excited about it, but you want to give them the permission to go wherever they want with it. 
The question that I love asking people when I first meet them, or if I haven't seen them in a long time and I want to just catch up with them, <clears throat> is I simply ask them, tell me one thing new and exciting in your life. Or tell me one thing new or exciting in your life. Sometimes I follow up with like, come on, feel free to brag to me. So I meet someone and say, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. My name's Arel. So tell me, I'm curious, what's something that's new or exciting in your life? Now, by saying new or exciting, you give them the permission to go anywhere they want with it. They might want to talk about a personal project. They may want to talk about a business project. They may want to talk about a fitness goal that they're working on. Whatever is of most interest to them, they get the opportunity to talk about. And most people do not get the opportunity to talk about themselves. Most conversations are really just people waiting for their turn to talk, not necessarily waiting for an opportunity to listen. By you giving someone the space to talk, they can go anywhere with it. Now, a lot of people have not been asked this question, so they don't know how to answer. They go, uh, ooh, nothing. And I go, come on, you got to give me something. Tell me one thing, anything. Brag to me, come on. Eventually, people usually will come up with something. And if they don't come up with anything, you say, listen, the next time I run into you, I want you to have something new for me or exciting. Can you make that as a deal? Promise? It's like something fun. In business settings, you can say, what project are you working on that you're most excited with, if you so choose. But I like to say, what's one thing you're most excited about? Some people might tell you about the birth of a child, or the niece or a nephew that was born, or maybe they'll talk, tell you about a raise or promotion they got. And then start asking follow-up questions. Wow, that's interesting. How did you get started with that? Or what do you hope happens with it? And then all of a sudden, a conversation starts developing because you're asking them questions about something that's of true interest to them. And let them feel comfortable comfortable to talk about themselves. You know, there's a great quote that says, we got two ears and one mouth and we should use them in that proportion. So when you meet people, ask them, what's one thing new and exciting in your life? Or what's one thing new or exciting in your life? Different responses, different reasons, the and and the or, slight change. Start using this and notice how much easier and how much more fun small talk becomes for you. You are awesome. Every day I wake up and I'm more motivated than I was the day before. And every morning I have at least 20 Connected Kid emails from adult adoptees across the country saying that they want to join this program and help out. Or from adopted parents saying that they have an adopted child that, that needs this type of program. Just a couple years ago, this was a concept, and now I'm seeing it roll out across the nation and the overwhelming support that we're getting. You know, this is something that I'm going to dedicate my life to, and I'm going to make sure and ensure that this is available to all adopted children. Every day, more and more emails come in, makes me realize how needed this program is. And that's the energy, or that's the reinforcement that I need, and that's what gives me the energy to keep pushing through the tough days. My name is Rachel, and my son is 13, and his name is Quinlan, and my daughter's name is Dorothea. They were nine and six when Toby came home. We're just so thrilled to have a little brother. I'll never forget the look on their face when we walked through the door and, met, and they met him for the first time. And he is a mentee of uh, Connecticut. What is Connecticut? All right. Well, Connecticut is a team based mentorship program for adopted children. We want to make ourselves available to all international adoptees. Uh, right now, we're currently focused on the Korean adoptee community, but we're currently diversifying our mentors, and we're seeing an increase in children adopted from other countries. The purpose of our mentorship program isn't necessarily to talk about adoption. It's to provide these adopted children with positive adult adoptee role models to 
help these adopted children become friends with other adoptees. So when these adoptees do grow older, they have a whole support system or a whole network of other adoptees they can lean on for support. I think Connecticut is a huge gift to adoptees and adoptive families. I think the fact that there are people out there that are willing to give their time, I just think it's a really beautiful thing. I was born in South Korea, October 8, 1983, and I was adopted to uh, an American family in Detroit, Michigan at the age of 18 months. You know, I come from a really hardworking blue collar family, and we didn't have a lot growing up, but my parents provided me with everything they could, and they gave me every opportunity to be successful as a child. So tell me about this story. Um, so... The man, this guy asked my mom and dad if I can be in the newspapers. I don't know how I became so popular. <laughs> Why are you so popular? So, man, I think you're made for the camera. <laughs> you guys, you guys want to introduce yourselves? Um, hi, I'm Elliot. I was born in Korea. I was adopted and when I saw my brother, he was very bit older. You know, this is, my, this is my purpose in life, this is my mission, to make this program successful. When faced with a big challenge where potential failure seems to lurk at every corner, maybe you've heard this advice before. Be more confident. And most likely, this is what you think when you hear it. If only it were that simple. But what is confidence? Take the belief that you are valuable, worthwhile, and capable, also known as self-esteem. Add in the optimism that comes when you are certain of your abilities. And then empowered by these, act courageously to face a challenge head on. This is confidence. It turns thoughts into action. So where does confidence even come from? There are several factors that impact confidence. One, what you're born with, such as your genes, which will impact things like the balance of neurochemicals in your brain. Two, how you're treated. This includes the social pressures of your environment. And three, the part you have control over, the choices you make, the risks you take, and how you think about and respond to challenges and setbacks. It isn't possible to completely untangle these three factors, but the personal choices we make certainly play a major role in confidence development. So, by keeping in mind a few practical tips, we do actually have the power to cultivate our own confidence. Tip one, a quick fix. There are a few tricks that can give you an immediate confidence boost in the short term. Picture your success when you're beginning a difficult task. Something as simple as listening to music with deep bass, it can promote feelings of power. You can even strike a powerful pose or give yourself a pep talk. Tip two, believe in your ability to improve. If you're looking for a long-term change, Consider the way you think about your abilities and talents. Do you think they are fixed at birth or that they can be developed like a muscle? These beliefs matter because they can influence how you act when you're faced with setbacks. If you have a fixed mindset, meaning that you think your talents are locked in place, you might give up, assuming you've discovered something you're not very good at. But if you have a growth mindset and think your abilities can improve, a challenge is an opportunity to learn and grow. Neuroscience supports the growth mindset. The connections in your brain do get stronger and grow with study and practice. It also turns out, on average, people who have a growth mindset are more successful, getting better grades, and doing better in the face of challenges. Tip three, practice failure. Face it, you're going to fail sometimes. Everyone does. J.K. Rowling was rejected by 12 different publishers before one picked up Harry Potter. 
The Wright brothers built on history's failed attempts at flight, including some of their own, before designing a successful airplane. Studies show that those who fail regularly and keep trying anyway are better equipped to respond to challenges and setbacks in a constructive way. They learn how to try different strategies, ask others for advice, and persevere. So think of a challenge you want to take on. Realize it's not going to be easy. Accept that you'll make mistakes and be kind to yourself when you do. Give yourself a pep talk, stand up, and go for it. The excitement you'll feel knowing that whatever the result, you'll have gained greater knowledge and understanding. This is confidence. my guests who joined me this week. If you have questions relating to business or entrepreneurship, submit them via social media at Live with Lisa TV or through our website at livewithlisa.tv and I'll answer them right here on the show. I will leave you with a quote from entrepreneur Lua Jess Min. Success is achieving what you think and feel is the purpose of your life. Have a positive week. He's going to steal my job. He doesn't have a job.